going on everybody? Today I want to talk about the fact that Apple seems to be losing some of the hype that it's had for years. I may be the only one noticing this. I don't know if I'm the only one noticing this or not, but it seems to me that in recent years, Apple has just kind of continually become more and more boring. So back in 2012, I was a huge Apple fan and had been for a few years. And I was just blown away by the products they were releasing that year. The iPad had a retina display, high, dis uh, high definition cameras. Uh, they were just doing some great stuff. Back in 2010, the iPhone 4 came out. It was an awesome phone. Just last year was the first time I got excited, like the iPhone 4 again, with the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 was a really good phone. But fast forward a year, and I think this is the most boring year for Apple in a really, really long time. And I say that because there's just been no product that has made me go, wow, that's really cool. I think some of what the problem is with Apple lately is there's no secrets. There's no surprise when we get to these keynotes and we see everything beforehand. The only big surprise that I got out of the iPhone XS event was not even the iPhone XS. It was the iPhone XR and the colors that it came in. Because the colors ahead of time were rumored to be like these muted doll colors. And then when they launched it, it was these bright, vibrant colors. It was very iPod Nano, iPod Touch 5 kind of really bright colors. It gave me like a flashback to old Apple back when they were releasing like really bright pastel kind of colors on their iPod lines. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. But the iPhone 10 leaked and everybody knew what it was before the iPhone 10 came out. Same thing with the 10s. Technically, same thing with the iPhone XR. We just didn't know exactly what colors it was going to come in. We knew it was coming in black. We knew it was coming in white. We knew it was coming in red. The rest of them were kind of a surprise. And I think they did a killer job picking colors on that phone. But what surprises me is with a lot of these phones, I think some of the hype and the excitement is that we know what they're going to look like before the event. So back in the day when Apple would release a phone, it was just amazing because you didn't know what was coming. But now, and it's been this way ever since the iPhone 4. The iPhone 4 was the first Apple product to just leak to everybody. You may remember the story where the guy was at the bar and he had the iPhone 4 and he left it behind and everybody saw it because somebody at Gizmodo picked up the phone and just put it everywhere. So everybody knew what this phone was going to look like before it launched. Then the next year with the iPhone 5, they managed to get it, the 6, 6S, 7, 7S, uh, 8, whatever. So everybody's always known what the iPhone was going to look like before it's come out. And that loses some of the hype. When the new Apple Watches came out, Nobody knew what the first generation Apple Watch was going to look like until it came out. And that was what made the keynote so exciting for me, is I was seeing the Apple Watch for the very first time. This year, I already knew what the Series 4 was going to look like. The press images le like leaked a week before the keynote. Why even have the keynote if you've already released press images and people know what the watch is going to look like? I get it. Apple says they're trying to double down on security and they have a hard time managing a company that's just one of the biggest, most valuable companies in the world. I'm sure that is a hard task to do. But at the same time, it's just it makes it boring for the rest of us when all the leaks are out in the news, YouTube, Instagram, everywhere you look, everybody's like, look, it's the new iPhone, and here it is. Before Apple even gets to tell us the specs, it's gonna have this, 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 and this. And by the time you get to the day of the keynote, as I'm watching it, I'm like, nah, I already heard that, already heard that, already heard that. And by the time they get done with the keynote, I literally feel like I haven't heard anything new. The next thing that makes me feel like this has been a boring year for Apple 
really has nothing to do with secrecy so much as it's genuinely been a boring year for Apple. So in March, Apple released an iPad. Uh, they did this last year, and it was really kind of cool. For $329, you were getting a solid iPad. And they did the same thing this year with Apple Pencil support, and that was it. And I was like, okay, that's a good upgrade, but it doesn't really matter to me. It's not the market that I'm in. I think the iPad Pros might be a different story. But then we didn't see anything until WWDC. Last year at WWDC, Apple went crazy releasing products. You had the new iPad Pros that were awesome. There was the uh, iMac Pro, which was a great advancement. I think they made some changes to the MacBooks and stuff like that. And they released iOS 11 and macOS High Sierra all in the same day. Like, we got tons of new stuff at that event. And iOS was a big change. Granted, it was buggy and glitchy at first, but they've cleaned it up over time. But this year, iOS 12 and macOS Mojave didn't bring any big features. I really can't say any feature that just jumps out at me as the headlining feature. There's Siri shortcuts, which I guess is the headlining feature of iOS 12. I'm trying to think of a feature in iOS 12 that I was watching the keynote and was just like, I love it. I I'm going to update to iOS 12 and I'm updating to this operating system for this reason. Like with iOS 11 and my iPad Pro, I had a reason to update. I wanted that better interface for the iPad and I was really excited about it. And this year, I haven't updated my iPad, I haven't updated my iPhone, because it just doesn't do anything different, and I ran the beta of iOS 12 on my iPad Pro, and it just was glitchy and weird, and I didn't like it, so I really have no reason to update. I have no reason to do either one, so I just stayed where I was, and I'm enjoying it perfectly fine for now. At some point, I may update, but I highly doubt that I'm going to do a software update this year just because I didn't see the need to do it, and I may eventually get a different iPad or something, but for now, I'm just going to stay with iOS 11 because it works, and it works well. Now, the other thing is after they released the most boring software ever, they top the most boring software updates ever with the world's most boring phones. And that, I think, is what was truly the issue. When they did this before, this isn't the first time Apple has done a let's fix iOS update. So if you remember, and I think a lot of people have not been talking about this, with iOS 9, several years back, iOS 9 was supposed to be the snow leopard of iOS and fix all these problems, and everybody was like, iOS 9 is great. iOS 9 brought a few big features, like there were some headlining features. It brought split screen to the iPad Air 2 for the first time, which was great, and then eventually it came to the iPad Pro, which was the bigger iPad, the 12.9 inch iPad that they launched later that year, along with the iPhone 6S. I thought iOS 9 brought some big changes, uh, but it was supposed to be a, a fix iOS kind of clean house situation where they just removed unnecessary lines of code, made the operating system work better. There weren't like many tentpole features, but there were a few, but they made up for it in hardware that year. Let me tell you, with the iOS releases that year, they really did a good job with the hardware. They came out with a waterproof Apple Watch, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, waterproof Apple Watch came out that year. They also came out with the iPhone 6S, which brought a 12 megapixel camera for the first time up from eight. They brought out the bigger iPads. They brought out the uh, iPhone 6S with 3D touch. I think I mentioned that already. But they brought out quite a few different devices that were really good upgrades. Fast forward to this year, there is nothing that is substantially better than what you could buy a year ago. There's really nothing that Apple released this year that is better than last year's. 
The iOS 12 update is free, so if you want to do it, do it. But if you have an iPhone 10 already, then just update it to iOS 12. Like if you're bored with the current phone, just upgrade to iOS 12 and you quite honestly have the same phone as everybody that updated this year to the iPhone XS. What's crazy is when I was in line with my friend who is switching from Android, so it makes sense that he would get the iPhone XS because you can't buy the 10 anymore. So I understand getting it if you're switching from either an older iPhone, if you have like the iPhone SE, iPhone 6, something like that, I understand. Uh, good choice, good upgrade. If you have the 10, if you have the 8, even if you probably have the 7, it's not that big of a deal unless you're just going for the max. Maybe I could see that one. But I just don't see the need to upgrade this year. And that's kind of a theme I'm seeing with a lot of Apple products. Uh, I just don't understand the point. And some of it is it's just like the HomePod. Every other smart speaker and what makes no sense it really doesn't make any sense every other smart speaker is fifty dollars or maybe a hundred and twenty if you get like the big ones and then comes the home pod which is three hundred and forty nine dollars and it can't do everything that the cheaper one from google can do and then you've got stuff like Siri that's just half-baked at this point. Siri is terrible when you compare it to Google Assistant. I love Apple, but Apple is really doing a crappy job lately. And I think this is something that everybody can agree on. Their phones are getting boring. Their software updates are getting boring. It's something I hope they fix soon because if it continues like this, the world's first trillion dollar company is going to start losing some shares because there's just nothing going on. Now next year, I think Apple might kill it with iOS 13. They could launch some great new phones. They could do something really good. But if they don't figure out something or a new product category, I'm a little nervous about the future of Apple because, and. I don't know. Apple has always been good about pulling this off in the past, but I'm a little worried about the future of Apple purely for the fact that Google is out there doing some really good stuff. Google's not afraid to try to enter markets that they don't belong in yet. And I think that's where Apple is kind of hitting an issue right now is with Steve Jobs, Apple was breaking into new product categories. Every five to 10 years, there was something new. They were entering in with new computers, and they were getting faster computers, more home computers, more business ones, and they were getting laptops, iPods, smaller iPods, iPhones, iPad. Then in recent years, we've had the Apple Watch, which came out in 2014, and it's been four years. Hopefully, we get some other new product defining category. I think the AirPods are cool, but again, you can't ride the company on that. Apple is still riding on the coattails of Steve Jobs and the iPhone. And if they don't manage to make the iPhone get that hype that it had with the iPhone 10, if they can't get that hype back, then Apple doesn't have a product anymore. It doesn't have a company and it's not doing anything well. I think Apple is wonderful. I love the Apple products that I own and I will continue to use Apple products. Because no matter what, they may not have the hype that they used to have, but they're still really solid devices. They're good products. They work well. It's just, I miss the days when I used to see the keynote and be so excited to pre-order. And this year, I could care less. I'm not upgrading. I don't care. And I think there's a lot of other people that are the same way that they're like, Wow, Apple event, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna get new products and the products are announced and they don't care. I don't care. I don't know many, buddy, uh, many other people that care either. It seems to just be a boring year for Apple. If Apple releases an iPad that's bezel-less and everything, I think that will be the most exciting product of the year. I'm looking forward to that. 
But otherwise, this is one big flop of a year for Apple. If they don't release an iPad Pro that's bezel-less and whatever, I think Apple failed at doing what they need to do to make this a great year. Because otherwise, it's been ridiculously boring. And yes, their products are phenomenal. I'm not saying the iPhone XS is a bad phone. The iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max are excellent phones. They're just not exciting phones. They're not something that if you own an iPhone already, you will feel compelled to buy. They're just not. That's my verdict on the whole thing. They're just not exciting phones. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Maybe you agree with me. If you agree with me, uh, leave some comments below. If you disagree with me, let me know why you think Apple is still doing a great job because I don't see it. If you can maybe enlighten me into what Apple is doing right, uh, besides, I mean, they're working well, they're working on their energy efforts, but I mean with their products. If you see something with their products, the iPads, iPhones, accessories, anything that you find that Apple launched in 2018 that was really exciting, let me know because I'm not seeing anything exciting this year. I'm really not. So if you found anything that's just awesome, let me know. If you hate it too, let me know about that too. I'd love to engage with you. Leave some comments down below and we'll start a conversation. Thanks for watching. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Peace out.